prophecies within the New Testament predict a period of extraordinary tribulation. Seven years of mounting calamities, climaxing with the end of days. The prophecies foretell that we will experience unprecedented suffering and great cataclysms. It is said that it will be worse than any other natural disaster in the history of humankind. It will be as we have never seen or heard of before. Its effects will reach far and wide and everybody all around the globe will know them. But before this great time of suffering begins, according to some interpreters, the Bible may point to a way out for some. This is known as the rapture. They claim that this event promises to transform believers into spirit bodies who will suddenly and literally be taken up into the air, escaping the pain and sorrow to come. It suggests disaster for those who remain. The one true God comes to rapture, his faith, slay the wicked, and send this evil world straight to hell. By its nature, the prophecy of a rapture defies rational analysis, but not to true believers in the Word of God. By all accounts, the rapture would be a supernatural spiritual event, a miracle orchestrated by the Lord God, and as such is a matter strictly derived in faith, as stated in Revelations 3.10. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. This passage speaks to a crucial moment for humanity, which has been highly debated for centuries. Even to this very day, the debate continues whether true believers will be taken into heaven before the disasters that mark the apocalypse, also known as the tribulation. Pre-tribulation rapture essentially teaches that the rapture happens before what the Bible calls the Great Tribulation, a seven-year period of trials that comes upon all those who have dwelled on the earth. Post-tribulation theory suggests that the rapture happens at the very end of the Great Tribulation when Jesus returns to rule and reign upon the earth. I am coming soon. Believers do not all agree among themselves whether the virtuous will be raptured before or after the tribulation. These opposing theories have been a contentious flashpoint for true believers. The reason, only if the rapture occurs before the tribulation will those spirited away be spared the nightmares described in Revelation. Jesus says, I will keep you from the hour of darkness that will fall upon the world. He says, I will keep you from, not I will bring you through it or protect you through it, but I will keep you from it. The millions who accept the rapture as a valid prophecy and one soon to be realized may be torn between expectation and fear. The rapture is the opening gun in a race to Armageddon, a time that ends with Jesus and Satan battling for the souls of mankind. To many the rapture is both an indescribably horrible event and also at the same time an indescribably thrilling event, even a joyous occasion depending upon which side one stands on as an individual. If the rapture does actually occur, would those left behind to face the horrors of the tribulation have any hope of survival? It would not seem possible for somebody to have much hope being present during the tribulation, especially after their loved ones have possibly already gone and they are now facing their own judgment alone. Judgments that are being rained down over the entirety of humanity all at once, and this chaos and terror would span across the entire globe. All hope would surely be lost, and your level of faith would now be all you could count on. Some prophecies believe that at one point during the tribulation, the entire world will have a massive earth-shattering quake that will level the mountains flat 
putting the entire Earth on the same distance above sea level. According to some interpreters, the Book of Revelation describes a chilling series of disasters. They believe pandemics will wipe out millions of people, young and old. Planetary changes will bring scorching heat and never-before-seen weather patterns. A third of Earth's waters will be poisoned by great rocks, which will fall from the sky. Wars and famine will break out and engulf all points of the globe. Wrong will be right, and right will be wrong. Today, many believe there are a number of signs happening right now that Jesus and the Hebrew prophets and the New Testament apostles laid out. Things happening now that are direct indicators that we are currently entering into the last days and that the return of Jesus is coming very soon. According to the Bible, Jesus promised that he would return to earth to take his people, to be with him. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. John 14, 1, 3. Did Jesus mean that he would return secretly and rapture his people from earth? leaving behind those who are lost okay. to wonder where their raptured friends and relatives have gone. This is the belief of those who hold to the idea of the rapture. In these verses, Jesus doesn't say how he will return secretly or otherwise. But other Bible texts make it plain what will happen when Jesus returns. After his resurrection, Jesus returned to heaven and the disciples watched as he rose into the sky. The Bible says, while they, the disciples, watched, Jesus was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two angels stood by in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in a like manner as you saw him go. Two points stand out in these verses. First, the Jesus who returns to earth the second time is the very same Jesus who lived here on earth with us and went back to heaven following his resurrection. And secondly, it says, he will return to earth the same way in the same like manner as he went back to heaven. How did Jesus go to heaven following his resurrection? Did he go secretly? No, he did not. The disciples watched him rise, literally, into the air until a cloud hid him from their sight. So these verses tell us that Jesus will return to earth the same way, not secretly. Another Bible text makes it even more clear that Jesus will not return secretly. Behold, Jesus is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him will see him. Clearly it will not be a secret when he returns according to the book. In Matthew 24, 27, Matthew says that Jesus' coming will be as visible as the lightning that flashes from one end of the sky to the other. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. The Bible says that Jesus will come in glory with the angels and that he will come with the shout of the archangel and a blast from the trumpet of God so that the wicked will see him coming and cry out for the rocks and mountains to fall on them, as to try and hide themselves from his face. He will return as King of Kings, leading the armies of heavenly angels. It would seem from all these texts that it is pretty clear that Jesus' coming back will be anything but a secret. The most speculated portion of the rapture story is the rapture itself. Since the beginning of the rapture story, one solid question remains. Is it better to be left behind or taken away? In the book of Matthew, Matthew says that when Jesus comes, it will be like it was in the time of Noah. Some people will be saved and other people will be destroyed. So the question is, who will be saved and who will be destroyed? If we look to the people who were saved during the time of Noah's great flood, then we would say, they were the ones who were left behind. 
They were not removed nor taken away. They were saved. Could it be that those who will be removed at the time of the rapture will be those who will surely perish? In Luke 17, 37, Jesus is sitting with his 12 apostles when they ask the question, Where, Lord? Referring to those who are taken in the end times. Jesus responds by saying, Where there is a dead body, there the vultures will gather. Could it be that Jesus is saying that those who are taken will be destroyed, as it is symbolized by the gathering of vultures seeking to consume the dead? Or is it meant to represent those who will not pass God's judgment? If we truly are heading into the end of days, as so many today believe we are, it may be a very good time to decide just how exactly you want your last days here on earth to be spent. And if or when the hand of judgment comes down on you, will you be taken or will you be left behind? This has been The Confidential Report. For even more stories like this one, make sure to subscribe to our channel today. And please show your support by clicking the like button on this video. For even more stories and news you deserve to know the truth about, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching The Confidential Report.